funded by the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland with the television licence fee. You're listening to Programme 2 of the five-part series, There Is Life After Addiction. Throughout our modern Ireland, many people and groups are doing Trojan work to help people recover from addiction, whether it be drugs, drink or whatever, and live addiction-free lives. In our last programme, we focused on the work of the Coonwer Movement, which was established by Sister Concilia Fitzgerald in the 1960s. Coonwer is nowadays the largest provider of residential detoxification and treatment for those suffering from addiction in Ireland. Now, continuing with our investigation of Coonwer, recently I visited Coonwer Athai, and here's who I met there. My name's Marie Galvin and uh, I spent some time here in um, during March and April, May and I uh, found it you know, an absolute lifesaver and um, Sister Concilio and all the staff do a fantastic job and it's, you know, it certainly gives me a, a really good foundation of carrying on my life and, and keeping sober basically and well because it, you know, alcoholism is a disease and it's a, a crippling killing disease and um, these places we, we need them and I also met up with another woman called Bernadette that day in Coon Ware. if anyone has a problem with alcoholism it's the best place to come to because there's so much warmth and friendship and camaraderie here that it's unbelievable and they have friends for life when they come here because they can always call upon anybody if they become friends at all they have contacts no matter where they go in the world I'm actually married to an alcoholic myself and he's 16 years sober never thought he'd ever be sober and he was a chronic alcoholic because we lost home and house and everything and we bought a corporation house in Cork and we worked our way up again and now we actually have our own business and I'm actually a director with him in our own company I'm a hackney and he's a taxi and we have five children and they're all doing very well so um, it was really plus the fact I go to Al-Anon and I'm a great advocate of Al-Anon for people that have problems with alcoholism in the home especially when there is a sickness there's a sickness there and there's a sickness that permeates in the home and everything and you have to just stand back and accept that you need help and I've been going to Al-Anon for well over 20 years now and I really, I would never try I would always get my meeting in or two meetings in a week and the friendships I have in it is unbelievable you meet them all over the place all over the world you don't have to be in Cork or anything for it to do so well, all I can say, Bernadette, is keep up the brave fight because, I mean, certainly it's one of the, probably the biggest step is admission mm, that, you admission. know, I mean, that you have a and problem. And there is an awful stigma attached to it because people do not want to know. I know for a fact I was married 24 years ago and I had a big wedding, what have you, and as soon as we lost everything, you'd, ama- you'd be amazed the amount of people that actually approached me afterwards. When you have something, they want you. When you have nothing, they don't want you. And that's what I learned. And we just struggled and we got up and we fought and I... I'm here to tell the tale. So I love to be able to give. And Concilio is such a wonderful person. I would do anything for her. And as Bernadette touched on a short while ago, families can be devastated by addiction. Now this is especially the case concerning children of alcoholics and addicts. Nicola Kelly, co-manager of Coonwera, a Thai. Children are hugely affected. What we do is when a resident does come in here, maybe to sit down with that resident and give them a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and a biscuit and the children and let the children see that their mother or their father is actually coming into a nice place and a family setting, you know, and for the children to feel welcome and to feel comfortable. You know, I feel working here that that's hugely, hugely important because children, when they do come in, you know, if I meet them or whoever meets them or whatever staff member, the children are just looking and they're looking at every, listening to every word that you're going to say and they're hanging on every word that you're going to say. And they're not stupid. And they're absolutely not stupid. You know, their gut feeling is the same as my gut feeling. You know, so we really do try and work hard for the families, for the resident and try and build all those bridges and those gaps that have happened as a result of the addiction. One of the most successful tools in helping people suffering addiction to find recovery is the 12 step programme. It's used by the likes of Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous and many other recovery support groups throughout the world. Kieran Ryan, 
a recovered drug addict and now an addiction counsellor in Coonwara, a thigh. The 12 steps really are a bridge back to normal living and a normal society for people recovering from addiction. It really doesn't matter what addiction you're suffering from, there's a 12 step principle there to help you. We in the centre here, we would have three A meetings a weekly for male and female. We have GA here for gamblers as well, and in the drug unit, then we would have NA for, for the narcotics. They accompany our programme, where we are not a 12 step programme here, but we find that people who come in here complete the programme we would suggest that the day they leave treatment that they would get to an AA meeting that night or an NA meeting or a GA meeting that night and attend a minimum of three meetings a week plus their aftercare the 12 step philosophy I suppose without it recovery wouldn't be recovery you know it it, it takes the whole person and looks wholly at the whole person including their self, their family (coughs) their community the spiritual aspect of it as well and it's about first and foremost it's about getting the person to accept and admit that they have an issue with or with alcohol drugs or gambling and it's only when the person can fully accept and fully admit that there's an issue there that needs working on and it needs to change and the commitment to change and ongoing change needs to be there and that would be the foundation of of, of the 12 steps okay i'm powerless over alcohol i'm powerless over drugs or i'm powerless over gambling and anytime i pick up a drink drug or a bet and slip that my life is out of control you know and i'm not going to be able to manage that i suppose fundamentally it's about building a relationship with self and then with others and then with god or with the community or whatever god of your understanding may be it really doesn't matter I think the most important thing about the 12 step philosophy that it's a spiritual program and it's not religious, you know, and it's open to everyone in all denominations and all creeds or whatever. And um, it's proven, you know, worldwide that people who get onto 12 step programs and who dare to the 12 step principles and philosophies have a much greater recovery rate, you know, and are much more successful at recovery. It is at the same time, as the literature says, it's only one day at a time. But those people who attend AA regularly, who go to the meetings, who get their sponsor, who would use the 12 steps both as a personal and as a practical thing, their lives improve immensely. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. And one such person whose life has improved enormously is William O'Brien, who successfully found recovery from his alcoholism with the help of Coonwer and its founder, Sister Concilio. I have um, benefited enormously ever since I met Sister Concilio and my life has changed for the better. So I'm eternally grateful for what she's done and helped me and all that. I'm in recovery now on a daily basis, over 22 years now, and uh, I found it a very good help. And uh, I suppose the sister says you have to believe in yourself before you can get on the road to recovery. So I've done that and I do it on a daily basis ever since. And that's, that's, that's the life I have ever since. And uh, it's been a fairly good life. And Billy, what's the Coonwer approach to finding recovery, making that journey from darkness to light, so to speak? For me, to believe in yourself and, and to find your own goodness in yourself, to believe that it's worth and useless or no good and low self-esteem, low self-worth and all the stuff that goes with it, not feeling good. I left school at 15, but I'm back in education now and I'm 48 years of age and uh, I find it of a, of a great bonus to me and, and every day and... Uh, I'm studying now for college there and uh, I believe I wouldn't have got that if I hadn't to get the, the help that I got from Coonvera. That's my own belief and I don't know about anyone else's belief but Coonvera was a, it's for me the the mission statement said it all. I was never turned away and even when I when I made mistakes and uh, I drank, I, was, I, I came back and I, it wasn't until I was ready and uh, accepted I had the problem then. That's where I believed it and I took it. I took recovery on the 20th of January, 95, from Coomber and I haven't had a drink since that day. So that's my life. And key to William's successful recovery was the group support and help from others that he received in Coon Wirra. For me, the group support it plays a lot because there's people that has has come before you, and they're bringing you to, they're trying to bring you to where they are, and if you either want it or you don't want it, and that's about recovery. Recovery is wanting it on a daily basis. From what happened, what I was like, and what it's like today, it's that's that's the difference, and we have to want to want it because it's living die situation. There's no in the middle. There's no uh, 
no participating for uh, I'll, I'll do this half and I'll only do that and do this either I'm going to do it or not going to do it at all in recovery like I have to uh, I have to do the things that the things I don't like to want to do as I said earlier on and the group support is a place a good part in a nutshell, support group meetings, whether they be Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous or whatever, are hugely beneficial to many alcoholics and addicts in finding recovery. Kieran Ryan. The thing about the AA is, uh, and about the fellowship is that you're surrounded by like-minded people. People who, who go to the meetings and attend the meetings are people in recovery themselves, are people who have been down the same road, can identify with the issues and the situations, experiences you found yourself in, and the situation and experiences you find yourself in at the minute. You know, these people are recovering. Some of them are long-term, some of them are newcomers. And whatever goes on there, you know, it's that universality of we're all in this together. I got through it, he got through it, we, she got through it. We can all get through this together. You know, no one is left behind. Um, everybody is welcomed, whether it's male, female, race, sexuality, creed or lack of religion. It really doesn't matter, you know, and that's the thing that, that helps people. I would personally feel more comfortable with someone who's able to identify with me and know exactly how I'm feeling or what's going on, you know, and be able to say, look, I remember being like that. This is how I got through it. This is what done it for me. You know, there's great comfort in that and there's great safety in it. And it's not only a benefit to you, it's a benefit to the person maybe that's given the advice that here they are, they're able to pass on the wisdom, pass on the knowledge. The wheel has come full circle. The wheel comes full circle because these people that are offering the help to me and are putting their hand out to me, by doing that they're staying sober or they're staying clean and that's what helps them stay clean. And that's the spirituality feeding back into the spirituality part of it. It's about one human being being humble enough to be able to say, OK, here's my hand. Freedom from all addictions, it produces a wonderful new person, you know. They become a light for other people. It's about getting well yourself and, and passing on the recovery to somebody else and giving someone a bit of light and hope in their life where there's nothing in any darkness. It's in giving is receiving it. When someone has fallen, pick them up to fall and if they're on their knees, help them. I'm not on the planet just for myself, but to help others, to serve others, to reach out to others. There's an old saying in the world of recovery from addiction that all the problems are psychological, all the cures are spiritual. So just how true is this? Lee McLaughlin, co-manager of Coonwara, a Thai. The Coonwara programme, the programme has four pillars. And, you know, the work, recreation, therapy and spirituality. Now, those have to work in tandem. They have to work together. And the spiritual part of it is probably... I suppose it's probably the most important one because people in addiction, the one person they don't like being around or they don't like being in company with is themselves. And the spiritual part of the programme here in Coonvera gives them the opportunity to be able to spend time with themselves, to be able to be happy and comfortable sitting with themselves in stillness and silence. And if that isn't achieved, if a person can't achieve that, like, you know, it's very difficult to be able to gain or to work towards recovery because you have to get in touch with that, I suppose, that part of you that if you look at the inner being to get in there to that inner being, to that huge spiritual part of you, which is, I suppose, if you look at it, that reservoir of goodness that we hold within ourselves and start living from that reservoir of goodness. And for people like young people, especially in today's world and today's society, who struggle with the whole image of God, but they all have it. They all have it in that reservoir of goodness inside them and to let that be their God and to get them to look at that and to be able to live from that goodness, that God that's within them and help them bring it on, like, you know, and that will help their own belief system. And the spirit that, that's within them that could be knocked out of them through addiction. But then as they kind of start getting in touch with that goodness, with that God within them, they begin to kind of start believing in themselves again, having faith in themselves. And that's the whole spiritual aspect of it. Here in Kuhn like, you know, we the spiritual part of it is two periods of meditation every day. We have an hour meditation in the morning and in the evening. And then we also have nearly daily mass and we have also the rosary every evening. As Liam McLaughlin just mentioned, a core component of Coonwara's spirituality programme is two periods of meditation each day. So just how challenging can meditation be at first? Kieran Ryan. I suppose at the start for me personally, it, it, it was a complete struggle. 
you know, meditation certainly wasn't something that I was used to or, or any understanding of. Coming in to do a program and being asked to sit down for for twenty minutes or half an hour in the morning in silence was very difficult for me. Now over the years, as I learned to adapt to it and and, and learn to to use it very regularly and very daily in my life, the benefits for me have been massive. You know, it certainly has grounded me. It's led me to a deeper understanding of both of myself and of my faith. Recovery wise, it plays an important part in my in my recovery. You know, I would meditate quite a lot. Um, I meditate at home and I meditate in, in, in a group setting as well. Again, there's a social element to it as well also where I get to meet new people of different faiths, of different cultural backgrounds or whatever. So there's that element too. But for my own personal use and my own personal benefit, it certainly has grounded me, given me a deeper understanding of my faith, Christian faith, and a bit of an understanding of other faiths as well and other cultural backgrounds. But for me, it's and my long-term recovery, and anyone that I know in long-term recovery, meditation would play a vital role and a vital part in, in their recovery program. Well, my name's Nila McCormack, and I'm from County Tyrone. I work in the Canberra House in Newry. It is a dark, dark place when you're in addiction. It's not an easy life. It's something I didn't want to be in, but I, I found myself in it. And each day was a struggle. You got up. I got up. I couldn't get up without needing a fix of drugs or alcohol or some control. Some Something always had a control over me. You know, from an early age of 12, right, right through to about... I'm 32 now, so about six years ago I got the help, like, so... That's fantastic. And, I mean, what's it like, you know, to be liberated now and to be clean, basically? It feels great. It feels uh, like each each day can be difficult, but it's one day at a time. And there's a deeper inner peace with me now and an inner strength. But I've all... My credit goes to Sister Concilio. She saved my life. Not only did she set up these houses, she held my hand when... Nobody else held my hand. She held me, gave me a hug. She gave me unconditional love. You know, she's been the truest person in my life that's ever given me unconditional love, that doesn't expect anything from me. And all she gives to every person who walks through Converse doors is love and faith and hope. We get our faith back in our own life. And I do believe Our Lady is working through Sister Concilio to help people because she helped me and saved my life. I mean, Nuna, for yourself, what are the pillars, kind of, to, to make in recovery? Because it's an arduous journey from talking with different people. Finding your own goodness. Finding, uh, when I went in, I hated myself, as most people do, coming into recovery, coming in somewhere to get help. Having to come in to get the help is a very difficult decision to make. And then, when you do, you go in hating. I went into the house, it was Convera House in Cork, and I went in hating myself. But it was Sister Concilio who helped me to start to love myself again. And then I was able to deal with pains and hurts from the past. And the day is set up, the structure of the day and the programme is set up to help you to get out of your head and down into your soul, into your heart, into a deeper place. And meditation it's difficult in early recovery, but meditation comes in time. And being able to sit with your, being able to sit with my own self is so difficult. It took me, it took me a long time to be able to even sit with my own self in meditation. Because without a spiritual aspect in recovery, you will not get well. It's not about religion. It's just about liking yourself and loving yourself on a daily basis. To find your own goodness in yourself, to believe that it's worth and useless or no good, and you have to believe in yourself before you can get on the road to recovery. We all have love in, in ourselves, but we've got to go down deep in ourselves for to find our own goodness. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to realise that since its inception over half a century ago, Coonware has had a tremendously positive impact on the lives of many people. I had this question to ask Kay Quinn, who successfully found recovery from alcoholism in Coonware and now works as a CE supervisor in Coonware 
a thigh. Okay, what do you love about Coonery yourself? To me, a person comes in utterly distraught, broken, no hope, absolutely nothing. And they come in here and they do a program. Now, okay, sometimes it can take one or two programs to work for people, but you see people getting better by the day. And they begin to take an interest in themselves again, an interest in life again. They're interested in different things and they want to know and they're able to get up in the mornings and they're able to have a wash and they're able to do anything they want again. Whereas in the addiction, they were fit for nothing. And to see them leaving, looking healthy and well, after putting on a bit of weight, looking well, wearing a bit of makeup, doing whatever. And to see them walking out after 12 weeks, it's an amazement. But you know what the best part is? When they start coming back to their aftercare on a Saturday and they look better each time they come back. And the aftercare is so important for them to come back to. At least then we know that they're putting the programme into effect. And Kay, what's the essence of the aftercare for people who find recovery? It's to keep them grounded. Once a resident leaves a Coonwer centre, Coonwer tries to help organise aftercare programmes and support groups for them. Nula McCormick. Once you do the Coonwer programme, especially after 20 weeks or 23 weeks for me, you need that, the, those support groups on the outside. You know, it's like somebody with diabetes who has to take their injections or whatever, or somebody that is ill and needs to get better. Well, it's the same for people in addiction, you know, that's coming into recovery. By doing this programme and by following all the suggested things, such as going to the support groups that are outside, you're going to stay well. If you don't do that, you won't stay well. There's also transition houses around the country too, so when people do a, a programme, transition houses ease the people back into real life and real society again. And it's amazing, the transition houses are great because it does help the people. Because when you're in addiction, you find the wrong people, you be in the wrong places and you find the wrong things to do. And it's knowing that that's not good for you and not to go back to that. When Coonwer first began the 1960s, it primarily sought to help those suffering alcoholism. Nowadays, it deals with all forms of addiction. Nicola Kelly, co-manager of Coonwer Athai. We see people and young lads coming in here, presenting here with an alcohol problem, here at our detox. But we soon discover that that problem isn't just alcohol. That a lot of these young guys are taken all different forms of drugs from cocaine, heroin, hash, tablets. Tablets is also a huge, huge problem. So when they present to us here with their alcohol problem, as I said, it comes to our attention that there's actually more of a problem here and that this chap or this girl is actually could be dual addicted. Then we have a choice here, you know, well, they have a choice. We don't have the choice, but we would suggest to them that they go on and do the drug program that we offer here, which is a longer program, probably a more intense program. Sometimes these young people will take up our offer and more times they will turn around and say to us, absolutely no way. I'm not here for drugs. I'm here for alcohol. You know, and we would talk to their families and ring their families and they would contact them. But at the end of the day, it's down. It's their choice at the end of the day. You know, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And that's my experience. Sister Concilio had started here 50 years ago and people presented here just with an alcohol problem. And that was the only problem. But now it's absolutely, completely different. And to be honest, it worries me what's happening, you know, and it's becoming bigger and more extensive. You know, and for families out there that are struggling or that, you know, maybe think that their son or daughter is in trouble or could be in trouble or their gut feeling is not that good, you know, maybe they should just pick up the phone here, you know, and ring and we'll try and help them as much as we can just to listen to them and hear what they're saying because that problem is absolutely widespread. And we do go out to schools and we go to churches at night time and, you know, people share their experience, you know, and their hope. You know, and there is help out there, you know, and maybe that mother, I did have a few phone calls from a few parents last week, really concerned about their son. And I'd say just lift up the phone and to know where your kids are. I think that's very important, especially the younger kids, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15. Know where your kids are and just to... 
talk to them, listen to them, open up the lines of communication. You know, recovery is all about connections. So just to keep that connection open with your son or your daughter and to pick up the phone here if you need to talk. And at this juncture, I decided to once again talk with several Coonwer enthusiasts at a recent Coonwer Open Day in Athai, County Kildare. So great playing there. Who am I talking to there? My name is Noel Carroll. I'm the violinist and I'm the cute accordion here. Is Noel, Noel Healy. We're absolutely to be li- delighted to be here today. We've known Sister Concilio for a long time. And Noel, for yourself, I mean, what is the magic of Coonwer? The magic of Coonwer is that it gives people hope. And the, everybody, there's goodness in everyone. And Sister Concilio and her team uh, can bring the goodness out of each individual. And that's what's good. They're able to tap into an area that when you're outside the gates of Coonwera, that people are too busy to try and uh, listen to your problems and to try and help you. That once you come into the gates of Coonwera, they're there to help you, and it's a wonderful place. The people here, they're very united and very supportive, to, and they understand each other's problems, and that's what's good, that people understand your problem. And once you feel that you have that support, you're, you're on a winner. Today, we said we'd come along and you know, bring a bit of entertainment and music to the place well, and, and hopefully the people enjoy it. Well, all I can say is good man yourself and keep up the good work. And sure, you'll give us another bar there, won't you? Absolutely. A bit of a tune there. We will indeed. And Nicola Kelly had this to say about what she loves most about working in Coon Were. To see people come from that darkness into the light, no words can describe what happens for people here. You know, it doesn't work for everybody, but it definitely sows a seed for everybody. I have absolutely no doubt about that. Hoover is a way of life that we all get on on a daily basis and, and we try to help each other. We try, that's the thing about Hoover, we all try and we're all there for each other. William O'Brien, who himself successfully found recovery from alcoholism in Coon Wirra. There's uh, two sayings in Coon Wirra. Coon Wirra is a place where you change yourself and nobody else. And do not criticise another and they travel in their shoes. So we're, we, try to, we try to live by that. We try not to be judgmental. You know, when someone when someone has fallen, pick them up to fall. And if they're on their knees, help them. You do the best they can. And that's my belief in, in Coon Wirra, that we're all here to help each other. And it's, it's a great, great, it's a wonderful place. Thank you very much indeed. A wonderful applause. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you very you much. Indeed. Funded by the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland with the television licence fee.